I'm doing a giveaway. Stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can enter to win. What is up everybody? I'm no Lux Given, and today we are going to be taking a look at some Storybook Brawl 99. I am picking up the fates here, doing some live commentary because I don't, well, this is, this is taking my recording time away to be able to uh, give you guys content for tomorrow. So uh, yeah, this is obviously from yesterday, but we are going to get faded onto something here on turn one and Wizards Familiar is fine. Lonely Prince is fine, but we also have this option to Forbidden Fruit and take another crack at the apple here. Okay, well, I do think that unfortunately Crafty is worse potentially than some of those other things. It is going to give us some some interesting uh, angles here in the early game, uh, but yeah, ultimately just felt like it was a good idea to potentially take a look for Blind Mouse or Humpty Dumpty. Didn't really cost us anything other than we did exhaust the Forbidden Fruit, but we happen to play against a Share Bear anyways, and now we've got four gold to spend on this turn. So we're definitely going to pick up Crafty. The question is then, do we pick up Poliwoggle or do we pick up Lonely Prince, both of which are kind of speculative pickups. But I think I'd like to go into a Poliwoggle strat for the future. I think that we're already going to have a big unit next turn in the form of Crafty. We'll pick up that treasure. That'll make it. Let's see, it's a 4-4 four, four that gets plus 4, plus 4, and plus 3, plus 3. So yeah, we have we have an 11-11, then we have a treasure, and then we've got something else. But we are going to take some damages here. We're going to take 5 down to 33. So not the best start, but we also get to pick up a faded polywoggle. Well, not faded, but it seems like we're faded here, right? So next turn, I think we'll just pick up two polywoggles and the Genie's Wish. I would really like for characters in my shop to have plus one, plus one, but for right now, I'm gonna bench the poly, and I think Secret Stash could be good here too. So the options are Secret Stash to just give us some extra health, give us some extra econ, or Corrupted Heartwood just to give the polywoggle plus one attack. That said, I don't think that we need that because we are gonna be able to give the polywoggle plus three, plus three because of the fates. So it will be a 5-5 five, five next turn. The reason I'm benching Poliwoggle, I'd really love to grab an upgraded tier 4 unit. And we have to wait till next turn to make such a play. So, seems like it could be sweet. We are going to fall a little bit short this combat, meaning we're already cracking open our Secret Stash, which might just mean we get to pick up a 3-drop right now, and that could be okay. Don't really love my options. I'm definitely going to pick up these Polys first before we mess around with the genies though. And now we find Fairy Tale. We also find Dark Contract, which is kind of interesting with Kitty Cup Purse, at least for this turn. Maybe Fairy's Tale is ultimately a better buy. That's tricky. Mm, I think I'm just more comfortable with Fairy Tale. So for that reason, I'm going to go for that. Now the question is, do I want to rip off Genie's Wish or do I want to roll and pick up a three? And rolling and picking up a three, I think definitely has some merit to it. Uh, we didn't find a great three here. We could roll one more time or we could just pick up this Wicked Witch. Um, let's just pick up Wicked Witch for now. We're running a little bit low on time on the clock, thinking through a lot of my decisions out loud here with you, but I do think we're gonna slay with Poliwoggle against a Geppetto. So that aspect I'm excited about, and then we actually have enough stats still to win this combat and hit Geppetto for some damages. So that's nice. We're gonna grab an upgraded tier four unit. Not the best one we've ever seen, but it's an upgraded tier 4 unit nonetheless. Definitely going to look to do something with this in the future, like Shard of the Ice Queen or True Love's Kiss. However, for this turn, what are we thinking? Uh, I don't think it's terribly too late for Brave Princess. I'm somewhat interested in XP because we are... Um, well, 
I don't really have a good justification for it, but <laughs> I was going to say because we're playing Storybook Brawl 99, though, I'm not really sure if that means anything or not. Um, I think I would like something like this. It's a little bit awkward. Oh, I guess I do this. And then I put Brave Princess and Trojan Donkey on the back, locking on to the XP. The other option would just be to take both of these two units, or even Darkwood Creeper plus Brave Princess. Oh, Darkwood Creeper could be good with Soltak Ancient. Okay, that's enough to sell me here then. So let's do this, and then definitely picking up Brave. The only question is, do we backline the Creeper? Actually, I think I will. I think this seems fine. Getting a bunch of stats on the Creeper seems good, or on the Soltak seems good. Maybe that's enough that we don't have to True Love's Kiss it. And then I am going to go ahead and lock onto that XP. I think that that will be reasonable for us. And looks like we are going to be off to the races here with our Soltak. This Soltak's doing some nice work for us. We're going to slay with Brave. And Soltak's just going to continue to get massive this turn. So that might actually be enough that an XP pickup starts to look pretty good. Starts to look pretty good. We could do something like this. Pick up Shadow Assassin. Supporting that with Wicked Witch as our other buy for the turn. I don't see why not. And I think this is actually a, a board that can win. Not that we have to win. It's not a Wish Upon a Star. It is simply a Turkish Delight. But I'm here for it regardless. Let's, let's fix the hair a little bit. I was letting that get a little bit messy with my mask earlier. How we looking? How we looking? Okay, good. So, yeah, Storybook Brawl back. It is now a once-a-month event, so needed to make sure that I could participate in this one. And I'm excited about it. It, it also seems like, you know, a 99-player lobby. That might just because it is early on in the event. Uh, so there's either excitement or... Uh, just like a good time. I'm not sure if that will peter out, but typically you do see those 99 lobbies when the event first starts. Uh, but it'll be interesting if the infrequence of it and trying out the different times with it, uh, how those affect the turnout for it. Uh, but happy to play in 99 lobbies. And it's, it's so funny when you play Storybook Brawl 99 and then you wind up playing a comp that you've never played before. Um, it's just it's just crazy how that winds up working out. And we're not going to get a slay with Brave. We are going to get a win here against DSK. We see another Soul Tack. Definitely don't need that. What do we need? I mean, certainly XP and True Love's Kiss are at the top of my list. <sighs> We could go into some Slay shenanigans, though I'm not really feeling that. I do like Friendly Spirit. I do like Blessing of Athena. Could even just do something weird like this. Throwing the Friendly Spirit here. Also potentially picking up a Shadow Assassin. Like we sell Bad Billy. Pick up Friendly Spirit, Shadow Assassin, and Blessing of Athena. I don't hate it. Not sure if I'm supposed to just be picking up Riverwash Mermaid because Princess P is so much fun right now. It also feels weird to pick up the Shadow Assassin without... I, I think, you know what, I am going to pick up this for sure. So I could sell Bad Billy and the Wicked Witch to pick up Blessing plus Riverwash. And I think that's going to be the route that I go here. Um... Like I said, I'm not super invested into Shadow Assassin, especially not enough to pick up another one. But I think that ultimately all of this looks pretty good. Now all of my units have a Slay ability, which does mean that we're at least growing this and that's good tempo, despite uh, not really... Shadow Assassin is a unit that has not made my endgame comps in a while at this point. So just trying to play good tempo, just trying to play good storybook brawl. We are going to get our second Brave Princess slay there, and then we should have no problem winning this combat with this massive Soul Tack. My opponent with a Cat's Call, maybe. We spoke too soon, but the Soul Tack is still quite the nuisance, I believe, on this battlefield. Darkwood Creeper even going to get a little bit of growth in there for itself. And then, yeah, Soul Tack will... Hold it down while Shadow Assassin and the backline finishes things off. So, 
This is looking good. It's looking okay. We could throw in something like a Heartwood Elder. I obviously don't hate playing trees in 99 because they're a good strategy. We're somewhat set up for trees. I'm mostly set up to buy XP right now. Um, I could definitely see something like a Lightning Dragon being something I'm interested in, though, too. This will give us a lot of direction, I think, this Tier 3 treasure. Okay, you know what? I actually could go for another Creeper, and apologies that my phone is ringing in the background, probably some scam telemarketers, but let's go for the Flourish, and then... Interesting. A second River Wash is definitely tempting. We could sell off both the Creepers or something like that. Might just lock onto it for a second here. Plan on picking it up next turn. Next turn is 4.0, but I just see a lot of scenarios where, like, we get Bad Moon or something and want to move into a Slay Comp. But I don't know. We'll, we'll play it by ear, see what we pick up for next turn. For right now, let's pick up this, and then... Do I want to put in Darkwood Creeper? I think so. I think that this soul tack, just getting double creepered, is uh, a lot of fun here. So let's go for that. We are not going to get the slay with the brave, so that is definitely a little bit of an annoyance. But the soul tack is going to be doing some nice work for us. And it looks like the other creeper will survive, which is nice. Brave princess going to be taken down, and. Then we will win the combat, get another slay in there against Jim. And we'll see what else we can do with this turn. Now we've got two pairs and a brave princess, so we're definitely building towards something. And I'm definitely going to falling stars here. That seems too fun to pass up. Let's see if we can triple one of our pairs. Yeah, we still have this golden chicken. All right, Baba Yaga. Definitely really tempting as well. Not because of Shadow Assassin, but just because it is um, a good card. If we get the... Like, we can also use Baba Yaga to pump up the Brave Princess this turn. And then we could potentially lock on to Aeon in case we find Ball from that. So I think that's going to be the way to go. Let's sell off of these things. Uh, unfortunately, I think we are not going to be making use of the Falling Stars from the, or we're not going to be making use of the double hunt, uh, Darkwood Creeper from the Falling Stars. We'll just play the one. And then even if we don't find ball or map here, we're looking for ball, map, or moon. Those are the big power spiky treasures. Uh, even if we don't find them though here, we can roll for Creeper. And then the other big spiky treasure would be Horn of Olympus, and we could potentially roll for River Wish Mermaids and Baba Yagas and try to find that. Because I think that we are quite powerful right now. We've just had so much stats on this soul tack throughout the game. Um, this interaction works, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the creeper still allows the Baba Yaga to get pumps. So that's nice. My opponent with a bunch of monster books and falling stars of their own has been pumping up our team a little bit here. They also have a huge spell weaver. So that part is a little bit annoying. Looks like we will take a loss here, but only five damage down to 26. I can take that. I can take that. Did we get the slay? We did. Wasn't even paying attention. We did not get any of the huge treasures though. So... It's definitely going to be a little bit of a bummer. I think not hitting that, we roll for Creeper, Mermaid, and XP. And we don't pick up Aeon. We pick up just Haunted Helm and probably put the Friendly Spirit here or something like this. It seems good enough to me. Let's roll. All right, we do have the possibility to pick up a Lightning Dragon here. I don't hate it and actually might really like it to just slap a lightning dragon in slot three yeah let's pick that up for now all right a lucky coin could have bought cindy before we took the lucky coin but this is fine another lightning dragon and then we do find the xp as well so 
that it's actually more likely that I just find myself in trees right now and for that reason should buy the XP. I'm just wondering if I should sell off the Lightning Dragon or sell off the Brave. I'm going to sell off the Brave, buy some XP, and now at this point we're 2 XP up and we're hitting level 6 next turn. doesn't matter if we win the combat other than it preserving our health total, I would want to win. Uh, my opponent has a soul tag as well, so that's going to stop the lightning dragon. Uh, that's always a, a good the good use of the soul tag there that we've totally been neglecting that ability for it, but looks like we're doing okay. Yeah, our front line's gonna be able to battle with my opponent's full back line, and we will get a kill shot there. So now we're level six, two XP up, like we said, and what do we want to do with that? Well, that answer is trees or peas. I'll take a River Wish if we find it. Special if we find Jormungan, but I don't think I'm going to pick up a Baba Yaga. I don't think that's what I want to do. I think I want to at least find any six-cost unit. Okay, well, Hercules is a good six-cost unit. It's definitely not what I was thinking about initially but I do think it will be good to have. Mm, yeah, Crafty's actually more stats, so we'll pick up Crafty. Might actually like to do this, so that way the Lightning Dragon can slay. Then the question is, do we want Nyan Sea Terror? It really only builds into Staff of the Old Toad, but that is still quite powerful. Mm, I think rolling three more times for more trees is better. We'd have to True Love's Kiss this Soul Tack twice, though I'm not against that. I'd love to mix a Wizzle, then True Love's Kiss it, but short of that, or we could Mimic, not Mimic, just um, Wand of Weirding Kiss. Okay, well, it's still a tree. It is still a tree. So we'll just keep that in here for now and... Um, still try to kiss it again. That would be something nice. Eventually, we'll also have the Hercules target to shard or kiss, so that's going to be something to consider. But for right now, it's just a large unit that is uh, getting two-for-one trades against my opponents here. This is going to be a close loss. We take eight down to 18, and we only got one hit on Herc. So Herc still needs three more hits to activate. That's fine. We can take eight two more times and still activate it. Anything tier six. Anything tier six is what I'm looking for. Okay, well, here's the thing. I do think scam is really good. However, I do think it's kind of a fool's errand to try to scam an entire 99 lobby. Because eventually people will just build better scam than you. So I want to do something proactive. There's Jormungand. It's definitely a little bit proactive. It's also definitely a little bit weak with how... I mean, I guess there's still ways for it to work. We can still find the horn. I can just take it because it's my first tier 6 unit. It will be strong right now. So might as well take it. Oops, did I? Nope, okay. The camera turned off for a second there. Let's make sure that doesn't happen again. I'm gonna take the candy rain and then roll, and then we find a tree and a dwarf. I'm definitely still interested in the trees. I think it's gonna be the easiest thing to build as opposed to slay. Uh, though, you know what? We found the Jormungand. We don't have much else in the way of trees. Let's roll. Let's roll. Okay. And now that we found Jormungand, I think we do lock on to another Baba Yaga. Um, I could probably rearrange this order a little bit, but Lightning Dragon's able to slay and stay, which is massive, because it's going to get a whole bunch of stats this turn. Hercules doesn't complete, but does a pretty good job. Jormungand gets some scaling, and then we are going to be able to win this one quite handedly here. Um, we'll trade the River Wish into the Baba Yaga. So this is good. We got some scaling. We got some Herc completion. And we should have moved some things around on this front. 
but I think this is still quite good. So now we're looking for River Wish and Baba Yaga, as well as Jormungand, not really as into Green Knight or Croc. Burning Palm is not bad on Lightning Dragon. We're down to 41 players in the lobby. Crazy how quickly some of this stuff could move. I would also love to True Love's Kiss the Rotten Applewood still. Okay. I like that. Uh, we'd have to sell off Crafty and Friendly at this point. I'm trying to think of the best way to put things in after that. It would be cutting the Rotten Apple Tree, selling these two, and then putting in a Lightning Dragon right here. But I think that that's worth doing. And I do want to play Hercules for the turn. If we lose this combat, we probably don't, especially to a single-digit health player. We probably don't take 18. Not to sell them too short. Okay, yeah, that's so finicky. We're just going to go like this. Pretty sure, yeah, we were playing somebody pretty much towards the end. Uh, Mordred against Lightning Dragons. We could potentially throw them off in some capacity that way. And you know what? We actually just do this. So that Jormungand gets first attack. Definitely, like I said, could get a little bit awkward, a little bit wonky. But ultimately, I think that this should work out for us. The Lightning Dragons attack in. They do get kills. And they kill somebody with perfect supports. So really good. We are going to get our Hercules treasure. And then our Jormungand will be able to carry us the rest of the combat. But uh, yeah, they didn't have a Jormungand, obviously. But they did have some crazy supports on this board. So that is going to be a kill onto Mordred. Would love to steal some of these treasures not quite perfect supports no mimic chest but bad moon quite good and then i think we have to box it up it is awkward that we're going to be taking box which is kind of a pivot because the tier seven treasures work much better with trees and then we're going to go back and pick up the river wish mermaid but let's see what we can make do if we can find a great tier seven treasure i am not going to complain pick up this and then sky castle is probably the way to go that way we can find more river wish mermaids don't really need the haunted helm at this point and yeah this looks good so could just pick up king arthur try to find a river wish mermaid that way uh i don't think that that is worth it though and then i think i'll do this yeah look for trees that is good now I want Echo Wood, especially with this box coming in next turn. All right, all right, we're back on trees. Back on the tree plan. I don't think we need to play all of these trees this turn. In fact, we could even just play this right now for this turn. Um, potentially keep some Jormungans or something in check. I'm not going to go for Heartwood Elder. This is not bad, though because the Fate's Hero Power is not doing much for us. It's still doing something. It's not doing much. I'm going to just roll. And depending on where this Pandora's box takes us, we've got a lot of options. Mostly in the trees, because of just, again, how Tier 7 treasures work so well with trees. But, hey, maybe we get, like, a Fairy Queen's Wand, and we just say, all right, time's up. Let's just play Storybook Brawl. Taking out Court Wizard is going to save us a lot of headache here. And we also get a nice hit onto that. And yeah, our um, our units definitely combat well here, despite them all being monsters. We get a nice easy kill onto Merlin. And our tier 7 treasure is interested in Holy Grail, interested in the World Tree. That is going to make everything a royal, which means that now we've got two more treasures incoming. A tier 5 and a tier 4. And it means that everything can triple, everything can be evil twinned. So I think I'm just going to skip. I will take Staff of the Old Toad. Staff of the Old Toad World Tree Sky Castle is really cool. This is awkward, but I think I still go for it. If we find Ninth Book of Merlin, that's quite fantastic for us. And means that we can toss the uh, Sky Castle. The fact that we didn't means that I think I'm going to hang on to the Sky Castle... Everything's a tree, so we can just play Ashwood Elm. We can even start trying to slay with Ashwood Elm, which is kind of interesting. Now I want to find something like Good Boy. Lordy is also fine. Will work very well with Echo Wood. I don't think I want to go in Pumpkin Territory yet. 
And because this is our last roll of the turn, I think I am just gonna pick up Lordy and then roll and just be fine with that. So definitely put together an Exodia comp of sorts. Uh, it took World Tree to do it. I did not, I have to be honest here, did not think about the implications of hitting specifically World Tree while we had the Sky Castle, but it definitely, you know, I'll give it, I'll give that one to my third eye, maybe somewhere back there i knew that there was some hidden hidden synergy hidden synergy of playing both of these two comps at the same time lightning dragon gonna have no problem slaying because of the bonus from the ashwood elm of course and then ashwood elm also going to be able to slay which allows jormagand to trade with scion of the storm and allows us to get a win here so pretty nice stuff we are looking for any tier six pairs to potentially find some other avenues to victory. Court Wizard, also always a lot of fun. At which point I'm potentially looking to cut Jormungand, which is very awkward. Maybe I'm just cutting River Wish Mermaid here, actually. But Court Wizard is so powerful, and we can pump it up right now with an Ashwood Elm. Right now, maybe we're doing something like this, despite having no slays. Okay, yeah, Jormungand's probably going to go pretty soon. I guess we can go like this, and technically the Jormagan can slay, which grows the Ashwood, so that's fine. Um, Echo Wood is good. Echo Wood is definitely good. Maybe we... Uh, Lightning Dragon is actually somewhat anti-synergistic with what we're doing, so that's worth considering. I do like Echo Wood, so I think I will take it. Yeah, and right now our main synergy is... Lordy and Ashwood Elm both pumping up Court Wizard, which is then getting a bunch of bonus attacks. And that's really all that we're going for. And I don't think I'm going to go for anything else crazy. A True Love's Kiss on Rotten Applewood, still quite good, because any upgraded tier 6 unit is fabulous. And then, of course, I'd love a Lordy or an Echo Wood because those can potentially build into Ninth Book of Merlin. We've got pretty good chances to find them as well with Staff of the Old Toad and a few more turns in this game. 18 health, leading the lobby. Feeling pretty good about my chances to Super Crown here. Opponent is going to get a Slay, but so will Jormungand if it hits the 50-50. Okay, nice. So Jormungand gets to Slay. Uh, that's going to just give me bonus attacks with Court Wizard, which is enough to clean up the battle here. So easy peasy. Another kill onto Celestial Tiger, and we're potentially in top 10 range if all of the single digit players died. No, top 13. Well, that's fine. Could do Burning Beard, but I think I'm past it. I think I'm just looking for Lordy and Echo Wood. Pumpkin, also good. I could cut Baba Yaga. That's not really doing too, too much for us. Yeah, I'm into that. Pumpkin, good. And I will take another pumpkin. I just have to think. Do I want another Court Wizard? Um, so the, uh, the thing that another Court Wizard does is, is really not that much. Yeah, I don't think I want another Court Wizard. Like I said, I think Lightning Dragon is kind of a trap because it doesn't work with Court Wizard. Oh, you know what? If I replace the Sky Castle, then I might want Court Wizard. Okay. Sure. So let's sell off... Let's sell off River Wish Mermaid and Lightning Dragon. And then let's take Great Pumpkin. If this gives us... It does not. It does not. Okay. I don't hate Ivory Owl. I don't hate Mimic Chest to do stuff silly eventually. But I can't toss the Sky Castle, so I'd have to toss Staff of the Old Toad. I think that's fine to go for Exodia. is like, kind of fun. And at that point, now I'm just rolling for Lordies. I'm no longer picking up Court Wizard while I have an active Sky Castle. I'll pick up another Court Wizard after I toss the Sky Castle, but can't really afford to do it before then. And I think the rest of my board is fine. Jormungand, a little bit unimpressive, but it'll trade for something, so that's fine. Princess P gonna give some stats to a few of my opponent's units. I'm looking much, much bigger than my opponent, so it's just gonna come down to a pumpkin off. That's a battle I think I can win here. So let's see, let's see. Oh, we are gonna get our Court Wizard 
clobbered. But now, yeah, here come all the bonus attacks, and, and from there, that's just a win. We just have to take out the Cupid before the Cupid takes out the Court Wizard, but, well, I guess it's fine. We can do it in either order. This is still going to be a win and a kill. Slowly, slowly getting a win here but surely getting a kill onto the Trophy Hunter. So now we are really rolling for Lordy and Echowood. Those are the main two draws. We took ourselves out of Staff of the Old Toad, but those are still really good things. I'm not gonna worry about that. I do like a pumpkin. I will pick up a pumpkin because Jormungand has absolutely done nothing for us. <laughs> so not really super interested in that. Awkwardly, our Echo Woods have no health. They just attack and die, but that's fine. I think I'm even gonna space out my pumpkins a little bit, doing something like this, maybe. And we do not hit. Hold on, time flies are good, aren't they? Oh, I've never played just a time flies in a fates comp well i really like it but i also really like hitting one of these four triples next turn and basically next turn we can spend eight gold rolling for one of those four tier six triples get the ninth book of merlin and just have exodia comp before the finals and i think as many times as i can do that on my turns the better uh because i've got four different things that i can triple here jormigand the lowest priority i might skip a jormigand in like the first two rolls of a new shop but i'd like to get it eventually court wizard actually needs a little bit more stats too so that part's awkward but we are going to get some additional pumpkin hits in so that part is nice at least and nice, they take out the Rotten Applewood, so that's good for us. We do hit the one -er that doesn't let us get a Court Wizard kill here, but now Court Wizard takes out two things, and then it'll take out the third thing after this pumpkin pops open, and that's a kill on to Potion Master. So we will definitely take that, and now we're rolling. Like I said, Jormigand in the first two hits of this shop. I'm gonna roll past. Good boy, though. Could certainly be convinced. Uh, but I'm more convinced to go the ninth book route. So let's look for that. Princess P, but no supports. We could just take a Pigomorph. Let's roll, let's roll. All right, like I said, two more rolls. We could pick up a croc bait as well for like pumpkin. It's not terrible. And this is our last roll to hit something this turn. I will sell my or my bench for it. Though, unfortunately, we are not going to get there. Okay, we get there one hit too late. So at this point, we could sell Lordy and these other units and pick up that. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if that's worth it. You know what I actually kind of like here, though? Black Cat. Silly. Oh, it spawns something a lot worse with Pumpkin. But it just, it's another Court Wizard trigger. Did I not lock? Oh, I don't think I locked the Echo Wood. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. Uh, Lance is going to slay. How big is that? That's pretty big. That's pretty big. My opponent with Baba Yaga, um, River Wash, and then this is going to slay as well. So we kind of need to scam this opponent, which is not the position that I wanted to be in. If we take full damage from their back line, we lose. So this could actually be a loss here. We need to get a scam in with Cupid, but we are going to get that scam in. We take out their Jormungand, love to see it. Now we're gonna take out their Princess P, which is gonna make their back line bigger, including their Echo Wood. Their Echo Wood's gonna smash into Pumpkin. And now we've got another scam with Cupid plus Court Wizard action. We might actually have the stats to do this here. Um, at the very least, we survive right now, right? Yeah, we take 12 and we survive. So I think that we did lose, but that's a loss we can take with. Raven, one of the uh, mods of the Discord server, did forget to lock. So that is also kind of huge. Apologies for that. Thinking out all my plays here is definitely made we make a little bit suboptimal of plays playing up against the ghost we do have to notice right now don't think there's any tier two treasure that i have any interest in yeah let's just go ahead and 
right the wrongs of the past, pick up this Echo Wood, take Ninth Book of Merlin, toss the Sky Castle. Now all of our things are casting double spells. And now we have to decide if we want to play Black Cat and also if we want to play a Burn Beard. Burn Beard would get a bunch of health, which just gives a bunch of health to the Echo Woods. And unfortunately, oh no, no, my camera's back. Okay, great. So I could sell three things here. I do think I want to play Summons more than I want to play. Okay, let's take this. Yeah, I think I just want to look for summons. I mean, I'm going to play the upgraded Echo Woods. But I think that playing summons is just going to be better than... Oof. Okay, Court Wizard getting attacked into is kind of nasty. We just have to hope the double spell cast on everything is going to be enough. We get two Pigos right off the rip. That's pretty crazy. And then we take out Baba Yaga, which means we've also kind of taken out my opponent's Princess Peas as well. Yeah, that just attacks or affects the one River Wish Mermaid in the back. So this is still a win, but we got to smarten up a little bit for our next combat, potentially. All right, we get the win here. That's fine. Um, oh, jeez. The spell even finished it off. That was, that was crazy ordering. Did you see that? It attacked into my Applewood. Then I fireballed it. And then it Phoenix Feathered and attacked again. Oh, I must have actually cast a Rotten Apple spell. That must have been what happened. Okay, so... How can you go wrong with more pumpkins is definitely something that we want to ask. That just seems really freaking good. Uh, maybe even better than messing around with these Echo Wood shenanigans. Let's cut this. Let's cut this. Let's pick a pumpkin or two, boys. And, like, we could just do this, right? Just play Black Cat there. Uh, I'd definitely consider another Court Wizard at this point. We could finally mix a Wizzle this Rotten Applewood, um, which was a Poliwoggle turned Soul Tack turned other stuff. Um, I mean, Baby Bear is good. Ah, oh, this is just so many spells. It's so freaking tempting. Let's try it. It seems fun. Oh, there was the... Uh, yeah, too much going on there. There was the uh, True Love's Kiss we could have also finally done as well. All right, they are going to Medusa, one of our units, which means we got two spells coming at you. And we don't have as big of a Court Wizard, but I still think this is fine. This is going to be enough to get a kill and move us into the top two. And then I think we will be playing... So Raven, we know, was the Slay Zelhua. I have no clue what this Merlin is up to. But with all of these pumpkins spawning a whole bunch of units each, I think that we are definitely going to be fine on this combat. Oh, that's a bug. That is a bug. Medusa statues are still supposed to have all character types. So we did find a bug. Uh, but like I said, I don't think this is really going to matter. We're just going to cast way too many spells that uh, we should be able to find a win here. And yeah, there is one scam. Aeon can now even slay, <laughs> which is great. And uh, yeah, we scam yet again. Scion of the Storm definitely has some interesting shenanigans with it. Do I want to play another pumpkin? That lets me put in a lordy. We are playing up against Raven, who is going to slay us. Did they have Lightning Dragon? I honestly cannot remember if they had Lightning Dragon or not. I am tempted to also put back in Lordy, just to have my characters be a little bit bigger. But I don't know if I want to play another Pumpkin. I think I want to find a Bear Stain, potentially. Wombat's kind of cool as well. Bear Stain's going to be the only one that gives us multiple summons. Alright, we kind of ran out of time a little bit. Sure. Let's pick up a Time Flies, and let's pick up a Bear Stain, free roll to end the turn, lock onto another Court Wizard. This seems good. So now we can just be Court Wizard and Summons. They are going to get the Slay, 
And they've now picked up a bunch of Echo Woods to complement everything as well, but our plan here is just total scam. We are just playing a bunch of things. They're gonna make absolutely massive units, and we're gonna try to scam every last one of them. So that's the plan here. Um, it could definitely go wrong, it could definitely go right, but uh, not upset to have the Exodia comp go off. Uh, even if it if it fails, you know, that's not on me at some point. Uh, casting two spells here, there we go. There is our first scam of the match. We will also need to scam the Princess P or lest we deal with the Baba Yaga of it all. And then of course we'll also need to scam out these Echo Woods too. Those are quite large, but this is gonna be a battle. We're in for it. For a moment here, we do take out the Lancelot eventually, and I think we'll probably just take out the Baba Yaga before we take out the P. Okay, never mind. We take out the P. Uh, so now we just have to deal with both of these Echo Woods. We've got an upgraded pumpkin attacking in now, and we do scam one more Echo Wood. We take out the Baba Yaga, and then here comes the pumpkin. Only one target left to scam, and we find it. So there we go. We had rotten apple trees in the front, and now we are in the finals against a 40 plus health Merlin. Let's see what we can do. Now it does look like the Merlin just took damage because like I said, 40 plus health, that does not look like it. So what I'm thinking here is a combination of time flies and other such measures. Maybe we put Ashwood Elm first so that way the pumpkins can spawn into the Ashwood Elm slot. Oops, we gotta move, we gotta move here. So, we could take Candy Rain. Let's dream. Let's dream. Okay, cool. Mordred will now put in, like, a pumpkin. Mordred will now put in a pumpkin for us. I could have locked onto that Lordy. A tripled Lordy, I think, could be good at some point for us eventually. All right, we are gonna get two of our units Pigomorphed, three of our units Pigomorphed, as they have Pigomorph plus Fork and Wand of Weirding. However, we do still have a bunch of summons coming out here, each summon casting multiple spells, and then Court Wizard attacking. This one's definitely gonna be close. My opponent with a huge mage comp, and they locked on the Pigomorph specifically for us, took out all of our pumpkins and stuff. Like I said, we're gonna get a bunch of spells, but they did a good job here clearing the board. Okay, here's the time flies. We like to see that. Then they take out this, but we still have some scams to go. We still have some scams to go. We need Cupid to attack, and that is not going to be the case, right? No, no, it's a 50-50. Cupid can still attack here. Okay, we get a scam. Cupid does not get an attack, though. So that part's a little bit awkward. That scam is a little bit redundant. And it honestly looks like we are about to lose. Okay, one more scam is good, but that will allow us to take 10. Dang, one health there, almost scammed, almost got the win. But you know what? Second place is not bad for my first game of Storybook Brawl in quite some bit. We put together the Exodia comp and did some really sweet stuff in this game. And that's right, the, the final pumpkin was in our hand there as well. Um, yeah, I think I think that we did it really good. Uh, the opponent just starting off the combat with the triple Pigomorph. They didn't have the absolute best hits, but they still took out one Court Wizard. And then our upgraded backline pumpkin, probably the best hit that they could have gotten on this board because this represents so many spells and then they just denied us all of those spells. So that is going to be it for me for this one. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no Lux given. Peace. This week's giveaway word is royal. Each week I use a new code word that's just to distinguish who's commenting for which week and the reason I have you guys say a code word, that way I can tell who is interested in the dust and who's just commenting to say hi or that they enjoyed the video, stuff like that. You can definitely do both, just make sure you include this week's code word. You can also enter as many times as you want per week 
once per video. You can go back, leave comments on old videos, just make sure they include this week's word, but there's no limit to how many times you can enter other than, I guess, the amount of videos that I have. And I've been putting out a bunch of Storybook Brawl videos since last October. So yeah, there are a bunch of opportunities to enter to win. You can go through the backlog and watch some of those, but it's been really fun to receive the comments from you guys, get that level of interaction. You can also come join me on my Discord, which I'm trying to grow right now, just so that I have one feedback on my titles and uh, thumbnails and things like that. But I also have some fun ideas for special game modes that I could make work with lobbies of players in the future. So feel free to check that out as well. There is a link to that in the video description and help me climb on my way to 1,000 subscribers. I'm, I'm getting there slowly but surely, and thank you guys all very much for your support.